We are watching my part three of the of the city council special meeting. Jack Wiles is uh, coming up to the microphone. Mayor, city council, manager, city attorney. Um, <clears throat> the Atlantic Marine project was somewhat unique. Uh, yes, there was a PCD involved. There's also another piece of property involved. Um, and I think to Diane's point uh, and Mike's point, I agree with most everything they said. I think the 40-foot buffer became a challenge with the property that was not the PCD, but was a 619 property, if I'm not mistaken. So there's where the problem arose. It wasn't the PCD. It wasn't the notification on the PCD. Uh, it wasn't they didn't get it timely. Um, I think there was just some confusion as to what we could do with that piece of property and what was anticipated by the neighbors that was going to happen with that piece of property. Uh, we tried a meeting with the homeowners. I don't know who was here that night, but you saw how that went. Uh, that wasn't very comfortable for anybody. I don't think the homeowners or the developer or the owner of the property. Um, I don't know that that's uh, advantageous. Um, what I would say is that if there is a PCD, I mean, I'm a homeowner too, so I'm, you know, I'm looking out for my rights um, and the rights of all people in the community. But if you're going to do a PCD um, or a rezoning, yes, there needs to be notification. I totally agree with that. Um, but posting signs, uh, public notice, newspaper, and a notice of construction, I think is what staff is recommending. Um, I personally think that that's quite a bit of notification. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want anything to happen prior to there being a contract and someone serious about purchasing a piece of property because it could certainly negatively impact the seller or the purchaser value of that property. If if the neighborhood got involved and everybody got involved and before there was even a contract and, you know, this thing could go nowhere fast and, and, and maybe kill a, kill a deal that actually could come to fruition once the neighbors are in, involved. But I think you're really walking on thin ice if you start having, getting too early in the game. If there's a contract that comes forward, the signed contract, the executed contract, is brought forth to the city and says, this is what I have in mind. Uh, I have a contract on the property subject to these things, then absolutely the neighbors should be involved. They should be notified and say this uh, piece of property, they're trying to rezone it, they're trying to make it a PUD. I think that's fine. I have no issues with that uh, because it's going to go through that process anyway. They're going to get notified. Okay. Yeah, let me in. Yeah. The, the problem with that is you end up with a conditional contract. Right. The, the contract has to do with it. He could it is. It is. Okay. Yeah, it would be a conditional contract subject to approval okay. of the city. So absolutely. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I, our situation was totally different. So as Mike had pointed out, and, and I think, you know, Mike and Diane and all the neighbors, I think, are getting along just fine now. But as Mike pointed out, I think a neighborhood meeting where you can sit down and talk across the table, ours was totally different. There was a lot of anticipation, a lot of innuendos, a lot of things going on that I think was just everybody thinking one way when it was really another way. And until we got that ironed out, um, that meeting didn't go very well. So I would really caution the council in getting too far ahead in meetings and notifications until there's something concrete uh, in place. Anyone else? Debbie Connors, 6023 here in Pond Drive, Port Orange, and Executive Director of the Port Orange South Daytona Chamber of Commerce. I just want to point out that with a lot of our redevelopment uh, areas that, that we need good things to happen, like along US-1 and like on Nova Road, um, just keep that in mind. There will be redevelopment. These are commercial areas, and I agree with Mr. Wiles. Too early in the process, and we've all seen it too much over the years. They're rarely, you rarely get to an agreement where the residents are happy with a commercial project going on near them. They just don't get there. I don't think it makes your job any easier. I don't think it makes them any happier. It just builds up steam. 
And um, so I think some notification is definitely called for and necessary, but I just think too early is going to create more problems and, you know, we, we need this redevelopment going on over the next several years. So let's just, just not get too carried away with it. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Ray Donadio, 301 Dunlop Avenue, uh, President of the Port Orange South Daytona Chamber of Commerce. Uh, just two or three observations. The first being that uh, although I can appreciate the uh, Mr. Ford's comments, there's some naughty problems that come with uh, with notifying people too soon, uh, and uh, and then notifying people of of various changes that could possibly happen in the future. I mean, the, you're you're treading on what is a slippery slope there. Um, additionally. Um, the the laws the, the rules that the that the city has set up for, uh, for having buffer zones and protecting neighbors i think is something that should be uh focused on in fact it already is in place and there is concern for neighborhoods and how neighborhoods will be impacted uh the thing that uh, with the, the the matrix and i think it's a very good matrix i think that maybe in council if they want to take some a proactive approach uh, it should be in the notification area, and if and if you look at the the matrix itself, uh, there are ten cities that were polled here, and of those ten, uh, of all the blocks here, there are really only eleven blocks where the majority of cities in this particular county uh, do some notification that is orange is not involved in. And those deal with the rezoning and the uh, PUD and uh, LDC amendments. Uh, in column two, and then in, in the column uh, eight and nine, with the uh, uh, posting the property, notifying adjacent owners. I think if you focused on just the areas not where one or two cities do something, but where the majority of cities have already invented the wheel, uh, it would it would lessen the impact. It would lessen the uh, uh, the work that's required, and I think it would strike some sort of a balance with the uh, with the business community and the neighbors uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? <coughs> All right, back to the council. Oh, excuse me. I just decided to get up. Uh, good evening, Sonia Laney, 5927 Riverside Drive. I'm just picking up on some buzzwords. I agree, knowledge definitely is power. Um, one of the concerns I have with regards to a, a set policy is um, whether or not we box ourselves in. Um, my only frame of reference is like the Internal Revenue Code. If you try to look that up, you will not find a definition for income. That's a very interesting point. So with that, um, what, I, what I would encourage you to do is to set forth a very clear definition of what your vision is for the city of Port Orange. I think that would help, um, particularly with planning department, um, come up with a, a plan that you might like and that everyone would like. Also, um, we would need a very clear definition of early. What does the word early mean? Um, early could be subjective. Um, what does early mean? So that could get you in a box. Uh, define serious. What does serious mean? Is that quantitative, qualitative? Is that subjective, objective? Is that at planning's discretion? Is that at the, the adjoining landowner's discretion? Who, who makes that call? Um, with regards to the planning department, what guidelines will be given to them to know when to, to alert the masses? Obviously, the zoning changes, the PDA and all of that, that's a clear-cut issue. But they, too, also need some subjective or objective guidelines and very clear-cut guidelines. Um, with the fact that those being clear-cut, that may actually box you in. So I would caution you on that. Also, with regards to a project, if we were to be the devil's advocate and you were a, a developer, let's just say any developer, and you invested your fair dollar in the property, who's to say someone else has the right to dictate as long as it's legally compliant, it's built within code, it follows all the parameters, who's to say someone can or cannot construct something within those legal parameters? So um, we would also need to consider that. You'd also, with the implementation of a new policy, if you consider what's happened in the past, is there some sort of special favoritism? Could a developer come back and say, gee, that's not fair, I cry foul, let me sue you um, and take you to the mat on whether or not you have the right to impede their progress. So these are things that I think we have to consider when drafting a policy. Um, you can get yourself boxed in and get us in a lot of trouble in a quick way if we're not very defined in exactly what our criteria is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have to end here. My 10 minutes are up. Let me.